Good day, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Scooter's World. Today is August the 22nd of 2023. Uh, on the bench here is my personal, but not anymore, 1966 Fender Bassman. I went through a lot with this amplifier. <clears throat> when I bought it, I paid $350 for basically what amounted to a chassis. It had been modded out the wazoo, uh, probably had been submerged in river water f for some length of time. Uh, it was just in the worst possible shape. It really was. And I paid way too much for what I got. But, um, yeah, I felt like it needed me. <clears throat> and at that time, I had, we're talking about, oh, 2012, I think it was. <clears throat> I had recently done uh, another blackface basement head and really liked the way it turned out and wanted one for myself. <clears throat> so I just pounced on it. And that may or may not have been a good decision at the time it's nearly completely redone the cabinet is a repro from mojo uh, the faceplate is original um, the majority of the knobs have been changed uh, over the years they've gone away <clears throat> that uh, fender logo badge i paid a lot of money for that thing because that is period correct <clears throat> um let's see that's about all you can really tell from the front of it I redid this amp totally from the ground up twice. Um, and I'll get into it in a second as to the whys and wherefores. But um, if this if this sort of thing interests you, and quite frankly, friends, I'm doing this video for myself as much as anybody. I'm not going to plug it in and play it for you. And I hope that doesn't disappoint you. Uh, mainly because if I do, I probably change my mind about selling it. And it just doesn't get used. So it, it it's going to its new home. And I'm happy about that. But I would like a, a video recording of uh, the inside of this thing just so I can have it for posterity. So let's open it up, shall we? All right, here we are on the underside of the chassis. And... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, you can see that uh, I replaced the uh, <clears throat> the board for the filter supply. Uh, very nice, <clears throat> very nice thick um, fiberglass. Uh, I got the I got the board set for this amp from uh, Watts Tube Audio back when they were still operating. I don't think they're around anymore. <clears throat> but uh, as you can see, I used the uh, tube amp doctor caps all the way across. And you can see that there was, there was one extra space here. <clears throat> when I first built this amp, I built it to AB165 specs, which is what everybody says they want. Well, that's not really what you want. What you really want is AA864. Those are the good ones. Uh, as I understand it, <clears throat> and uh, certainly I could be wrong, but as I've been told by people who know these things a little more intimately than I do, the AA-864 <clears throat> was one of the last things that Leo did, uh, and AB-165 was a very early CBS circuit. <clears throat> um, the AA-864 <clears throat> has... Uh, more early blackface qualities, even some tweedish qualities about it. Um, the AB165 has an additional uh, capacitor stage there that you can see right here I took out. <clears throat> when I initially built it, I did it AB165. And then I kept it and used it for a little while. And I sold it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I sold it to a good friend of mine. And he had it for, oh gosh seven, eight years, <clears throat> a fair amount of time. And during that time, I spent a few years trying to get it back from him. And eventually he relented, <clears throat> and I, I got it back. 
and it sounded terrible. Uh, he hadn't done anything to it. Uh, his bass player had been using it for rehearsals. <clears throat> uh, it just didn't sound good. It did, just didn't sound good at all. So I started uh, pawing through the the circuit, and um, you can see the other transformers here, not original. But uh, I started pawing through the circuit and realized that <clears throat> the the circuit that I wanted was the AA864, and that the AB165 was not going to give me what I wanted in terms of a nice crunch in the bass channel and a nice fender clean out of the normal channel, which is what the stock AA864 will do. Um, the uh, power transformer, as you can see there, is a Mojo Tone. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the choke is just a fender part. A, a, a more modern fender part and the output transformer again is just a fender basement transformer from a reissue the original output transformer actually lasted for uh, about an hour <laughs> after I cut this thing all cleaned up and I mean cleaned up I had to strip the entire chassis down to nothing what little was left in it and uh, <clears throat> scrubbed it judiciously because it was just completely, you know, jacked up and rusted out. If you look at the at the edges here, at some time in its life, someone pounded down the edges of this chassis in order to get it to fit, I'm imagining, in something that it wasn't intended to fit in. You can see that on the edge there. Um, you know, somebody just righteously went after it with a, a hammer and a screwdriver or a chisel or something. And the bottom lip here has actually been folded completely over. Um, it does fit inside of a basement cabinet still, but for some reason they pounded that down on both sides in order to get it to fit into something smaller, I'm assuming. Um, you can see my preamp tubes there in that shot. <clears throat> um... The usual, uh, JJ's there. I did use uh, some uh, vintage output tubes in this amp. They're short bottle. Uh, I think those are Sylvania or G GE, uh, probably RCA made. They're, they're short bottle uh, clear tops. And they just sound fantastic in this amp. They really do. Um, anyway, that's, that's pretty much it for this side. Uh, I'm going to flip it over and look at the other side. Stand by. Okay, here we can see the inside, and like I said, it was gone. the The original board was was rotted, had been modified a bunch. Uh, someone had, <clears throat> excuse me, had used. Um, they had modded it for instead of two channels, it was one big modded channel, and it wasn't functional when I bought it by any stretch of the imagination. Um, anyway, you can see your your tone stack there for the bass input, that input right there. It's got these three enormous caps in its tone stack, and that combined with an extra gain stage, it uses three triodes, um, uses the first two triodes plus one half of the second one. It's just got a tremendous amount of really fat gain, <clears throat> and that's when you plug a bass into it, <clears throat> it's wonderful and warm, but plugging a guitar into it, you just get this crunch, and the treble control basically controls the amount of crunch. Uh, you can see I got, uh, uh, there's a blue sozo in there, which is a reproduction of the old blue sausages. I really like those a lot. Um, that is the mid-range cap for um, the normal channel. And... Uh, you know, you, you can see some things missing, some eyelets that don't have anything in. Those are the things that were <clears throat> part of the AB165 that I got rid of. Uh, in particular, the bias circuit was very different. Um, there was a, I, I'm, I, it's been a while since I redid it, so I don't recall all the things I did differently. Um, but there is down there, there is your rectifier and bias board. We can get some light on it. Uh, with your six rectifier diodes at top. 
And then the uh, bias supply components there at the bottom. The usual stuff I like to use. And underside of the power transformer, there is your pilot light turret right there. Or bayonet, as they call it. We'll flip this thing around to the other side here in a sec. You can see the, <coughs> the tube sockets a little better. But this is all pretty pretty standard stuff for the way I do things. I do filaments a little differently now. I use a finer wire and uh, do a lot more twists, but that's what I was doing at the time, and it still works, so I, leave, I left it alone when I redid it the last time. Um, it's pretty standard stuff, pretty straight licks in here, but the differences in the circuit, if you're really interested in it, uh, go seek out the two schematics and print them out if you can, or put them side by side on your screen if it's big enough and uh, you will you will be able to fairly easily trace the differences and there's a few of them but it just translates to a better tone experience overall and that's the AA864 which is what this is so uh, let's flip it around so you can see the uh, tube sockets alright there's V1 up there and I've got shielded wires running to the first two triodes. And also to that one, uh, because that's for the, the uh, normal channel, the right-hand channel. And let's see here, speaker jacks. We got a 4 and an 8 ohm separate speaker jacks, because <clears throat> this output transformer came with two taps. So I wired them up in such a way that you have a separate jack for 4 and a separate jack for 8. Uh, makes it much easier to to run different speakers off this thing. Power tubes right there. Power cable, etc. And that's wired the way I typically wire it. Now I didn't put a tag strip for the white wire. Uh, I just uh, twisted it together and shrunk wrapped it on this one. Um, that's back when I was still happy with that situation. But these days I use a tag strip. Uh, this is going to be fine. Um, but it's just a little thing that I like to do a little differently now. I think that uh, <clears throat> I think that most amp technicians develop habits over the years um, due to, you know, experience. You, you try some stuff and you go, well, that didn't work so well. I'd much rather do it this way. And that's what it ends up being, so... Uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> I just wanted to, uh, mainly for my own uh, personal records, have a have a video of the inside of, of this 66 baseman that I've been through so much with. Uh, it belonged to a dear friend of mine, like I said, for about seven, eight years. Uh, he has passed away since, and... Uh, you know, I, I sort of kept it as a reminder of him, but I've got another amp that actually belonged to him that I built from scratch. So I have that. And this guy just wasn't getting used very much and should get used because it's, it's proud. This is, this is a very Fender-y sounding Fender. Lots of fun. Anyway, that, uh, that's all I've got for this little video. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this or anything else we do here at Granville Guitars, Seek us out on the web at www.granvilleguitars.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And the dusty and cobweb-riddled blog, A View from the Granville Bench over at WordPress. Maybe someday I'll actually update that. <laughs> That's all I know for now. Be good to one another.